Mid Journey version 5.2 just released and it makes web design much better. I'm going to take a look at it in this video. I'll show you what's changed, what's new and how it compares to previous versions. Let's start right now. As per usual, the website doesn't tell you too much. Yes, model 5.2 is out and it brings a few changes. One of which is the fact that this model is once again meant to have higher contrast, more vibrancy and better colors. But what about the particulars? How does it go for web design and what new features are available? Well, this is hidden in the fine print and let's take a look. Midjourney 5.2 now allows you to do something called a zoom out. It's an option that basically allows you to upscale an image beyond its regular boundaries and it also kind of changes the original images. There's a few examples available but the common one here is having a starter image that you work with and then you can zoom that image out to get a larger landscape of what it could look like. What I found useful is the fact that you can also change the aspect ratio. So for example if your image is 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 you could turn it into a square and it keeps most of its original elements without looking like it was squashed or resized. And what I really liked was being able to add a custom prompt while also zooming out to do something interesting like add a frame to a picture of an existing image. I wonder if I could do this with web designs as well. I jumped on Twitter to see what other people were saying and a lot of people were definitely digging these new changes. For example, you could generate a close up of a face and then zoom out to have a different background image like in this case. And then you can take images and zoom them out, interpolating them, allowing you to create these crazy dynamic Kind of transitions and this is just scratching the surface of what people have done so far. In another example I saw the AI art generate an entire image just from a person's eye. And the opposite is possible. Using these techniques, you could continuously zoom into an object like this shoe in the desert. Additionally, a lot of people on Twitter are saying this version of Mid Journey obviously works better than the previous versions, but there was something about version 5.1 and 5 where I found the web designs just weren't that great. So I'm going to jump into Discord. Here I'm going to pass in Forge class settings and I'm going to select to start using the latest version, version 5.2. Now I have tried different designs on 5.1 and I've always found that 5.1 wasn't that great at web design. 4 always seemed to do a lot better. So before I jump into 5.2, let me see if I can get a design ready on 5.1 so we can have a good comparison to how it does to the newer version. Let me jump into settings once more and select 5.1. Here's a prompt I used earlier. So I'm going to pass in imagine with the prompt being a web design for an airline service with discounts. And you can see here the images don't particularly look like websites. And this was my problem always with version 5.1. It just kind of felt like the training data didn't include web designs from places like Dribbble or Behance. And so none of these really are websites. Maybe this one on the bottom right, but even that is on the background of a Mac or a Mac screen rather than just a regular website. And I really wish Midjourney added more notes of what their training data is actually on, but that's okay. We'll jump into version 5.2 and see if there are any changes to generating website designs. I'm gonna use the exact same prompt here so that we have a good frame of reference. And this did much better. Look at these, these are actually looking like a real websites. I can see a header and a footer. I can see a hero section with text. Well, maybe the text doesn't make sense, but it never really did. Then there are buttons as well. So these are all the building blocks of what I would expect to see a website have. And these are the kinds of things that usually give me inspiration to create my own designs. So here I have my four images. I'm gonna select to upscale the very first one to try out the zoom. And once upscaled, I'll have some additional buttons on this design at the bottom here, where I can zoom out by two times or 1.5 times. I'm gonna start off with just a simple 1.5 times zoom out to see exactly what just happens. My goodness, this is amazing. Wow, this has created new designs that are still websites. And yet now I have a floating navigation bar. I didn't even expect it to do this. I have more of a footer. Let me actually compare this. So before we had this strict navigation at the very top, no real footer. Now we've got a footer and a navigation that's floating with more image content for the whole hero section. This is really cool. This might actually change how designs are done in in mid journey. Wow. Yeah, this kind of blew my mind. Now to try some other things, there's these new very strong and very subtle changes that you can make where you kind of remix an existing prompt. I'm going to try just over here. I'm going to see if I can make something that's a little bit darker, maybe something like a night sky with some stars and see how effectively that changes up the web design that I've got just over here. These probably don't look as good as I thought they might. It just feels like a lot of stars was placed on the background, but I did request for subtle changes. I'm going to 
to upscale version 3 because it looked like it was the one that looked the best. And here I'm going to try something slightly different. I'm going to try to zoom it out even further. This will be a 2x zoom out for the website. And I came out with these results. So these kind of almost look like you're viewing this website on a huge widescreen monitor. I swear that if I look at this example just over here, it kind of feels like there's an operating system in the background because I can see the little icons and stuff at the very top right. It does look like another navigation bar was created. And because everything's so zoomed out, it's hard to even see the text properly or the footer. I do see that I have a larger footer here with a background image that I probably don't really need because it's just chewing up a white space. And I don't think I need to expand out this image any further because if I did, and then I think all I would really do is get more background for these clouds as well as the stars in the background without much of a user interface, which I kind of already have in the middle. I guess the next real question is, can I make some subtle changes here, removing the text and UI and UX elements, just so that I could have a one main hero image that I could use for a website. I know this was one of the problems with the original mid journey. And simply put, a lot of people had to jump into Photoshop and manually clean up the images for them to be able to reuse them. Here, I'm going to use the varied subtle changes to remix the prompt. And these are the first iteration of that. I think too much emphasis was placed on the night sky with all the stars. And that would be almost too overwhelming in terms of a website design, simply because it'd be hard to overlay text in the background. So I I gave this another shot. Instead, I did a strong vary. And this time I took out a lot more of the prompt. I just had an airline service, which was more or less in the sky without all the night sky and stars in the background. And these images are kind of similar and they turned out really nice. I kind of love the clouds in the background and I could use these for a hero section. What I'm going to do is select a version one because it's kind of the closest to the previous examples I had. And this time I'm going to zoom it out once more so that there's more space to play with for a hero section if I wanted to overlay text in the sky. From the zoomed out versions, version two looked the best. It had a very empty sky at the top and lots of clouds at the bottom. I think I can use this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and I'm going to plug it into a website and see if I can recreate the original design, but using this as the main hero section. I'm going to load up Editor X. It lets me build websites without writing a single line of code. And here I'm just going to quickly create a brand new site on a blank canvas. I'm going to then select the main section here and I'm going to add a background image. I'll select the image I just generated using AI art and there it is. Now I can start customizing it. I'll make the header here for the menu transparent as well as sticking at the very top and I'll remove all the logos and other items. Here I can expand out the image and I've got lots of room to play with. For the image here I could have the center point a little bit above the plane just so that I have some more sky and here I could add in the hero text as well as maybe the navigation and with just a little bit more work and some time lapse I can definitely turn this into a website. Now, if this is something you're interested in, if you want me to do an entire video using Midjourney, ChatGPT, and lots of AI to create websites without writing any code, let me know, because I'm thinking of putting together a crash course. And if you want to learn more, definitely jump into my Discord. The Codex Community Discord link is in the description. And in there, I've incorporated Midjourney. In there, we cover all the latest updates that are happening, new things that you can try, as well as if you have problems to solve. And on top of that, I also run live streams too.